Hi, I'm Dr. Imran. I'm a consultant neurologist in Srinagar, Kashmir. Today, I will be talking about overactive bladder in relation to the World Continence Week that has been observed in June from 15th of June to 22nd of June 2020. It is a global initiative, an annual initiative that is being observed every year by WFIP uh, in collaboration with the International Continence Society. The main aim of this uh, week being observed is to raise an awareness about the uh, bladder condition, the pelvic pain, and the debilitating effect it has on the quality of life of these patients who have uh, this problem of incontinence. Incontinence uh, is a uh, condition in which the patient has an uh, unwanted and an involuntary leakage of urine. It is a very sensitive condition. Nearly 400 million people across the world suffer from it. It is a taboo. It's being talked less about and uh, it disrupts the life activities of the persons involved and it's very underreported. It is underdiagnosed and nearly 40% of the people who have these symptoms don't report to their immediate health care providers. Uh, um, actually, um, this condition um, is poorly addressed and it's not treated properly by the medical um, uh, professionals, despite having substantial effect on the health of these uh, persons and their self-esteem and the quality of their life. So a public awareness has to be made uh, for this purpose. This incontinence week has been is being held from uh, last uh, few years. Now uh, coming to the um, topic uh, today, uh, the oric to bladder. It's one of the causes of this incontinence and is found in a large subset of people. Uh, in or uh, to bladder, the patient usually has the symptoms of frequency, urgency, and sometimes they have incontinence also. They frequently wide. The usually during day they have a frequency level which may in, go up to 10 to 12 times a day, and during night it starts from 2 to 5 and 6, depends upon the severity of the. Uh, condition and sometimes uh, they have got so much of urgency that they can't uh, withheld the urine and involuntarily and unwantedly they uh, leak the urine so uh, these uh, people usually have urgency and leakage of urine also and uh, mainly the risk factors that uh, they are involved here are the it's related to the age it's related to the sex also age uh, being in the elderly, it's found most uh, commonly. It has been reported in a survey that nearly 33% of people who are above the age of 50 have these uh, symptoms, and mostly in uh, female population because of postmenopausal symptoms that they develop. Uh, then there are other people who are diabetic, who have got a stroke, who have got recurrent UTI infections, who are on some medicine that may increase the acuity of the bladder, and uh, some have got some debilitating conditions that uh, make them unable to move uh, fast to the washrooms, such as people who have got osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, or uh, neurogenic conditions, um, who have got dementias, they may have more of uh, this condition. Uh, it is an embarrassing condition. Patient usually um, uh, uh, tries to be aloof from the society, he limits his social activities and isolates himself. So we have to reach to this population, subset of population. Um, what mostly we do is that uh, we counsel them first. For, uh, there's a lot of behavioral modification that has to be done in them. We counsel them regarding their uh, weight, that they have to maintain a healthy uh, weight, they have to exercise regularly, the diet that they take. That is very important because um, uh, the caffeine has to be taken uh, in less quantity. Uh, the flavonoids that are found in tea, coffee, they have to limit those. They have to limit their smoking. Alcohol ingestion has to be reduced. Uh, then some people may take a lot of spicy foods. That has to be avoided. Uh, then uh, we teach them um, how to uh, time their uh, widening pattern, how to control their uh, blood uh, urge to urinate. These are bladder holding techniques. We teach them about some uh, exercises. These are uh, pelvic floor exercises taught by us or it may be done, uh, dealt with the physiotherapist also. Then, uh, then comes the part of the medicines that are in the market. Now, recently a lot of medicines have come that are specifically 
um, device for this um, bladder. So they have got less of side effects. Previously, there were a lot of medicines in the market, such as solifenacin, trospium, oxybutin, and now we have come with a newer molecule, that is Mirabagron. That has changed a lot. Uh, regarding the condition of these patients and uh, the, uh, the symptoms that they have. So uh, we are coming up with a newer molecule that may have more of uh, less side effects and more improved quality of life. So I may, uh, then there are some uh, patients who are refracted to these things also. Then we may go for some other treatment, endoscopic and non-endoscopic treatment. But I will not discuss those things right now. So in short, um, I may tell or um, I may appeal to these patients that uh, you come to a specialist center or a specialist uh, doctor uh, who may be a urologist who treats you uh, these conditions in a proper way. There are various methods, various uh, behavioral modification or medicine in the market that will improve your condition. And uh, you will see a lot of change uh, in your way of life. And uh, uh, hope uh, that uh, proper uh, guidance and proper medicine is uh, given to these pa patients. Um, so I may cut short my um, talk right now. So stay here, uh, safe, stay home. Thank you.